going on internet it's cabjoy and here today i've got something a little bit different for the channel that i haven't done before but i've wanted to do for a little while and that's some match analysis so i've got a friend who's uh been playing mk and wants to improve his game medley oz and he recorded some of his footage and said to me look can you have a look at this and tell me what i'm doing wrong how to approach these matchups better and just general ideas that'll help me improve my game so i've got some videos that i'm going to go through all in one hit um, if there's anything that I say that's slightly off, or if I miss anything, feel free to let me know in the comments. So we'll get started. So the first match we're going to look at is Sorcerer Quan Chi versus Kotal Khan Wargod. So the first thing to do when uh, going into a match like this that I would be doing is to, at this um, round one fight screen, I'd be looking at our ranges and where I want to be compared to Kotal. So Kotal's a pretty heavy rushdown character. He's got lots of good uh, frames on his normals, got lots of good advancing normals. And Quan doesn't have a whole lot to compete when Kotal gets in his face. So the first thing I'd be thinking is, I want to I want to back up and I want to get away from Kotal and I want to zone Kotal. It's the main thing I want to do because I know if he gets in, then it's going to be a bad time. So instead of go for things like maybe back to which can catch people off guard guard but is also risky uh right off the get-go i'd probably be looking to walk backwards walking backwards is one of my favorite ways to start the match i think it's one of the uh, safest most reactionary way to, ways to play because uh, kotal might for example throw out a downfall or an advancing string so some of the advancing string could reach from the round one fight um start of the match if you're just walking backwards but something like down four you could see and then whiff punish with something like back two, for example. So the first thing I'd be doing is thinking, I want to back up, I want to get out of his face, so I'm either going to walk backwards and react, or I'm going to dash backwards and try and get away. So let's see what Medley does. So Kotal, <laughs> Kotal just straight straight up goes for um, his advancing string, and Medley was probably either looking to hit a button, maybe he was walking back, and not holding block, that advancing string just blows him up. So, uh, a bit of a... <laughs> can't really do much about that apart from maybe be even more conservative and block at the start of a match. Especially in these um, ranked match settings where you're only coming against the person, coming up against the person once and you have no idea how they like to open matches, it can be quite hard. So, what Kotal did was he sent Medley in a combo, ended the combo with a um, pizza, I can't remember the actual word, but the projectile, so it's fairly plus, so Medley can't move for a little while, but now there's a decent amount of range between the two characters. So a little bit further back, maybe one backdash away would be optimal for Quan Chi, but Kotal's going to want to get in. So if he's running in with normals, uh, sorry, if he's just running in, you can stop with normals, but the mid-advancing strings, you have a hard time stopping them with things like your down three and your back two. Down three will just get eaten by the mids and back two is much too slow to start up. If you make a solid read on the run-in, NJP can actually be, instant NJP can be a pretty good option for Quan, but it's also a risk if it's baited. Um, but for now, again, I'd probably be thinking about either backdashing or throwing a skull. So runes are good zoning tools, but throwing a skull covers this space here, which stops the run, which is most likely what Kotal's going to do. And if you throw the skull, then you might have a chance to back up again. So let's see what happens next. So Medley jumps, and that could have been a read on the jump in, but Kotal's backed up, which is kind of unsuspected. So from here, what I would be doing is throwing skulls immediately. So I like to mix up between ground skulls, runes, and air skulls. And knowing which one to use in the situation um, basically comes about with a bit more experience. So I'd be looking at mid runes because he might run in, or uh, air skull because air skull will travel again around this range. So we'll hit him if he runs in, but it will uh, miss if he just sits there. But it's not really too uh, too much of a risk because he can't get in unless he jumps and runs, and you still probably land before he does. So the opportunity I would be looking for as Sorcerer is meter burning uh, a rune to make him fly backwards and you can summon your portal. That's the thing I would be looking for. I'd be trying to summon my portal, my armor portal as soon as possible. So we have some zoning. Um, probably not worth using the meter just for the hell of it. So that's right. Now Kotal gets a chance to run in and he's in uh, medley space, which is not good. So just there, 
that was just a bit of a lack of um, string knowledge. So uh, Medley got hit by the 2-1-2, two -two, I think it is, which ends in an overhead, which leads to this damaging combo. Now he's in the corner against the Sun Portal, and there's not a whole lot Kwon can do. So there as well, uh, Kyle used his string into the totem, which gives him some slight frame advantage, so the down one was guaranteed. So the way to deal with that would be wait for the down one and then counter poke accordingly. Wait for the down one, maybe even try to jump out, it can be a risk. Uh, but at this point, uh, myself as Quan, I would be willing to sacrifice the round. So if I jump and he hits me, I die, but I'd be on the other side for the next round, which is a really good position for Quan. Because if Quan corners and gets a knockdown against someone like Kotal, uh, as a sorcerer and gets the arm portal up, is it, it's very hard for Kotal to do much. So that'll be the end of that round. round two. So right now, again, I'd probably be looking to throw a skull or start zoning with meter burn rune. So Medley's got a lot of meter. So what that means is he can use uh, the meter burn runes uh, for pressure on block in zoning and hope for an opportunity to get his armor spell up. So now he's still in the corner. And it's pretty bad times once Quan's in the corner against Kotal, especially with the armor portal up, because he's going to be building meter. Keeps his frame advantage, gets open up by the 2 on 2 again. Frame advantage. And then even now, it's a bit of a hard time trying to get uh, zoning started against Kotal when he has his um, when he has his sunbeam up as well as the totem. So basically, once Kotal has Quan in this situation, it's very difficult for him to do anything. So it's hard to discuss how to. Um, how to reverse the situation once Kotal's in Quan's face. My advice, again, would be at this situation, at low health, in the corner, try to get out as best you can. And then in the next round, try and keep him in the corner. Um, so it's basically a, a game plan restructuring that might need to be done to help in this matchup. But apart from that, it's knowing things like the hit advantage, uh, sorry, the block advantage on some of Kotal's uh, specials and strings, knowing uh, what order the strings hit, so the important thing there was that Medley got hit by the 2 on 2 which ended in overhead twice, which cost him a lot of health. So what I would suggest doing, if you're not sure about a string, go to mkxframedata.com and you'll be able to see all the frame data you want, as well as the strings. So the important thing to look at for Kotal, if I can highlight here, we'll look at his strings and we'll look at where each of the hits occur. So he's got high, high mid, high mid, mid. Uh, high was 2 on 2, high mid overhead. So this is a string that opened up Medley a few times. And what you need to know is with uh, Blood God, there is actually no mix up with his string. He's either, he's, he hasn't got overheads on the second hit. So he's got overheads on the third hit or the first hit, which is the elbow drop, um, or he has mid low and that's a second hit. So if you are blocking his strings low, uh, the second hit low and then stand up and block the third hit, there's no mix up. So that's just a bit of uh, character familiarity. And then if we look at things like his sunstone, I believe it is. So block advantage plus five, burning sunstone plus 15. So uh, these are kind of situations where you need to understand when to respect the uh, block advantage as well, along with the cancel advantage of the totem uh, when used from certain strings. So just little things like that. But I think the main comment on this match would be trying to develop your sense of space. Try to keep Kotal where you want him uh, in terms of further away on the screen. And once you get him there, it's pretty much a wrap for Quan vs Kotal, especially once the armor spells up. So let's take a look at one of these Quan vs Katana matches. So I believe this one's Warlock Quan versus Katana. So let's have a bit of a look. Where are we? Okay, here we are. So Warlock versus Royal Storm. So again, things to think about versus Katana in this instance uh, would be typically Katanas like to keep space similar to Quan, 
So there's a good likelihood that he might jump back fan or just instant fan from this range even. Other options would be her advancing 4-2-1 string, which would hit from that range. Uh, so I guess as Quan, your options could be something like back two or jump in punch. But again, I prefer to do things like block or walk back or back dash just to develop a sense of space and give myself a moment to breathe and see what the opponent wants to do. So let's see what happens here. Alright, so Katana basically just jumps in and Medley uses his stand one. I'm not sure if the stand one was in reaction to anything or if he was throwing that out. But at that range, stand one doesn't have much of a purpose. So if you see, if you suspect or you see Katana jump in, like at, at that range, you can re definitely react to that jump with an NJP, and that'll beat her clean every time. And then you go into your trance combo, into a knockdown, and you get some damage. So the other key things would obviously be in this matchup. Jumping is very, very bad. Katana is very good at punishing people for jumps. So we had a single forward too. I'm not sure what was going on there. Bit of spacing with a portal kick. Okay, there's something that I myself as a Quan player never ever do. Uh, my philosophy is never commit to the raw trance after back two because it's too much of a risk. You can't hit confirm it. Um, so I always always use meter um, to make back two safe and then go from there because it's just way too much damage to eat or something that you don't need to be eating. Okay, so Katana's just jumping around. It can be a bit harder when she has float mix-ups and whatnot. But in this case, Katana's literally just jumping one side to the other without any kind of block advantage or hit advantage or anything like that. So Medley's free to move. And since Katana's jumping straight over, even if she floats, an NJP will beat her clean again. So NJP is really, really useful for that kind of jump over, crossover jump and punch situation. So now that... Medley had her full screen. It could have been good to continue to attempt the zone. But it can be hard if the Katana player knows how to use the low instant air fans. Uh, because basically your the damage trade-off between skulls and fans would be slightly in your favor. But if you start to try to use runes, the uh, the jump is actually going to avoid the rune. Your rune's going to miss completely. Sometimes the meter burn can catch it on the way down unless the fans hit you in the face. So what can be good is um, baiting the fan, ducking, and trying to punish with the 4-3 if you're using Round Warlock, two. for example. Fight. So right then, as well, I think Medley was trying to down one, possibly to anti-air, but an NJP would have just been a cleaner option to deal with the jump-in. Again, jump-overs can be dealt with the NJP. Make sure not to use the 4-3 at ranges like that, because 4-3 has a lot of good recovery. And again, a lot of jumpers, uh, sorry, a lot of jumps that could have been, um, could have been dealt with with the NJP. So we'll just have a look at this last Katana match for now. So it wasn't really being caught by jumps necessarily, but it was more being caught by jump-ins. So just remembering to block when you see the jump-in if you don't have time to react and wait for your turn. So if Katana tries to do anything into a fan or just a string, she's either plus two at most if she uses something like 2-1. Or, or it's your turn because she tries to end in a fan, which isn't ideal. Alright, let me just... Stop this real quick. Give it a bit of time. Alright, good armor. Not um, missing the special cancel into the trance. So just making sure you have those uh, links down is important. Uh, sorry, those combos down is important as well. So it's actually, uh, you're actually 
leaving a lot of damage off the table if you're missing those uh, fairly standard combos. That's just a matter of making sure you practice the inputs, which are, which I know Medley can, uh, does. He does it offline, so I'm wondering as well if maybe there's a bit of a lag issue here. So again, armor in a situation where it wasn't going to hit, so a bit of panic armor, probably because of the inability to deal with the jumpings at this point. Yeah, so it's a lot of getting away with jump-ins. So, the thing, if you have the option, so I'll keep watching, it might come up again. But if you have the option, walking backwards from outside of the jump range is important, an important way to blow up jump-ins. So there's another missed combo. Which, again, could completely change the situation you see. Not blocking a wake-up control what's going on there. Again, eating your jump in. So back there, back there, be very good at avoiding it if you don't want to have to eat the jump in. So again, from there, like the foot's good, but conventional then with Quan's probably a bit more effective. Okay, so just basically that match comes down to understanding how to blow up jump ins a bit better. Uh, let's see if we can find another example of when Katana just jumps in for free. Because if you space, if you sit yourself outside of that jump in range, which is definitely possible. Yeah, here we go. So he's probably going to jump in again, yeah. So let's go back. So she jumps back. Now she's at this range. And it was very likely that she was going to jump in again because she's this player's been jumping in a hell of a lot. So the 4 3 is going to whiff, but. If Pawn backs up in this direction, so just backs up that way a little bit, her jump in will whiff, depending on which jump in she uses. So her jump in 2, I think it is, has quite some range. But if he walks back, you can force the jump in 2 to whiff, and then you can punish it with, uh, I think even back 3 might work, depending on the range. Back 2 can work, although it may be too slow. Or if not, you can at least do something like a run-up throw, or a run-up back three, or a run-up mix-up, or, or anything, basically. If not, if you're not confident, or if that range of that jump two is too severe, because it is quite a long range normal, then the back dash can avoid it, and at least get you out of there. So there's a few options you have when dealing with these anti-airs, but we'll keep looking at it when we play, and I'll keep talking to you about it when we play, and if you have more matches medley that you record in the future, definitely let me know, and we'll keep looking at them. Uh, for now, I think mainly just making sure you hit your combos when you have the opportunity because that's one of the absolute biggest things, just making sure you don't screw that up because you're losing damage and not only are you losing damage, but some of the time you're giving the opponent an opportunity to get damage. So whether that means just playing more matches and trying to learn these combos more or if you need to sit in training mode and practice, practice, practice combos over and over again, that's fine. If you're sitting, if you're set on Quan, then you can definitely, there's definitely a few, there's like three different ways to start combos that are common, which I'm going to talk to you about. So low starter, overhead starter, uh, punish with like the 1-4, because it's the fastest often in JP. A few different options offered in air to air. So we can talk about those, but you just need to have a look at those and think about them and practice up your combos. And then we can talk more about spacing in the future. Alright, if anyone else has any questions or comments, or if anyone else wants to uh, send in some videos that you might want me to analyze, feel free. I definitely enjoy doing this stuff, and I want to practice doing the match analysis as well. Uh, after all, along with the podcast, part of the point of doing all this stuff is to help the fellow Australian players to get better at the game, and to bring up our standard. So, thanks for watching, for those who did, and I'll see you guys next time.